Um, so, I'm Jo, and this is only my third um, exhibit of, of a body of work. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled how it all turned out, and I wanted to be sure and thank Gabby for the opportunity, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm a new buddy. How it is. <laughs> um, so real quickly about myself, I uh, grew up in Phoenix, and um, I came out of the womb as a little tomboy. And so in Phoenix, you know, the siestas that you've heard people taking in, you know, Mexico and Central America, you have to because it's so freaking hot in the summertime. <laughs> um, so normally a quiet little activity for a girl in the 60s and 70s was what was thought of, but dolls weren't my thing. So um, I would pick the lock to my dad's workshop. He was a carpenter <laughs> and never and still never throws anything away. So at jo on job sites, he he was a framing carpenter for giant concrete pours, you know, mm -hmm. buildings, bridges, all that. He'd bring that stuff home and he'd make stuff out of it. Uh, we had a horse at the time and got really into making jumps for the hunter jumper folks and could whip them out in no time, mama decorate them. It was a great way for them to get through the recession in the 70s. But this kid would go in, I'd make things, but I couldn't show it to anybody because I wasn't allowed to be in there in the first place. So <laughs> that was kind of a sneaky little thing I do. Um, and um, so for the first 30 years of my life, I never used a power tool unless it was a garden mm. tool. Um, girls weren't supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it wasn't that he was being unkind, it just, and I never really asked. It just wasn't done. Um, so what I am really is a professional elementary school teacher. Uh, I retired in 2017, um, but uh, got to play a little bit with power tools when I turned 30 because my wife and I bought a little 1929 bungalow in San Jose that needed a lot of tender love and care. And, um, so I slowly started to amass my little projects uh, and tools, and the summers were great. Refinishing the floors, uh, rewiring the garage, and finishing the walls in there. Uh, that was just something I love to do, and I won't say that I never got hurt. I, yeah, I crossed some wires and got popped and got the nickname in the neighborhood of Sparky because of that. Uh, but, uh, you know, you live and learn, right? So that's, that's how I started doing that. But, you know, by 2008, I had done everything on that little house I could do um, and found out there was a woodworking... Um, shop in the middle school just in the neighborhood and we've run out of woodworking teachers unfortunately mm -hmm. in california because mm -hmm. uh, uh, it requires so many extra certifications because of safety so it was opened up to adult ed and that's where i finally found the lathe <laughs> and in a couple months i had already found one of my own on craigslist and just fell in love with it and it was a great way to kind of use up this energy that I have. Mm. Um, and then we retired in 2017. Marlene was ra born and raised here. Went to, uh, what's the name of that school? Not Palmer. Wasson. Okay, Not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, uh, she wanted to come back here, come back home, and many of her classmates are. Uh, so that's been great. And I decided to do the art full time. And it's been a great ride. Um, uh, I feel so welcomed by the art community here mm -hmm. and the gallerists, and it's it's been a great uh, learning for me. Um, so six years full time, I have a studio in my home, mm -hmm. and I am at it every day. Um, she she kind of has to make appointments with me, like, okay, take off <laughs> Sunday so we could do this. And yes, that's what I do. So that's my background. I'm not a trained artist. I um, have learned from a few folks, uh, but never had professional uh, tutoring at all. Uh, YouTube's my buddy. <laughs> so Jess, tell us about you. Um, I'm also not a professionally trained artist. I was, both my parents are artists. I was born in Florida 
And um, from the get-go, my mom's just had her hands in every little craft she could possibly be interested in and mm -hmm. was always pushing us to experiment with her and check it out and be creative in whatever ways we could. Um, mm -hmm. So when I moved out here nine years ago, mm -hmm. I didn't have a whole lot of time for art. I you know, do a lot of sketching and doodling and stuff, but it was a couple years ago that I quit my full-time job and was like, we're going to really put some time into it and I um, started building a little pottery studio and bought myself a kiln and a wheel and then the pandemic happened so I immediately had to put a pause on a lot of that and thought oh my gosh what am I going to do and I bought a loom and just immediately fell in love with it and we've just been working away every single day <laughs> like you said it's kind of hard to pull yourself away from something once you're obsessed with it mm. and I just can't stop thinking about it and messing with them and mm. it's just been totally absorbing since then. Mm. So not a whole lot of history as far as art goes, but we're getting going. This is my very first show and uh, Woo! Awesome. Woo! Woo! <laughs> not much of a talker. Um, I just really appreciate it. <laughs> 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 um, I really appreciate Stacy for introducing me to Abby here, and everybody's been so welcoming and supportive, and just like really stoked to get doing it. So, um, thanks. <laughs> um, and thank you for being here to hold my hand. So I didn't oh. have to do my first show all alone. <laughs> 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 I'm someone else to yeah. bounce ideas off of and. Yeah. Double check stuff with. But. Yeah, the dual show is, I love it, wasn't it? it, it there is <laughs> some nice, um, I don't know, just kind of playing off of mm -hmm. each other. And mm -hmm. even I had nothing to do with that, but I helped her drill those holes. Prithee <laughs> 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 was watching us one night. I have a little experience with power tools, which is very exciting. Maybe I'll get a little more. Get more intricate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. Let's see. Do you want to talk about uh why we why we called it industrial art in contemporary form? Mm -hmm. So I guess um it took us a minute to figure out kind of where we were going to meet in the middle with something like that, like an idea for the show as a whole. But I think both of our but the way our crafts come out are both very contemporary, very fun, um, kind of whimsical, uh, but both of those crafts are based in thousands of years of, you know, mm -hmm. human necessity of having to weave things for clothing and other textiles and needing a bowl to eat out of and <laughs> needing uh, tools and things. And I just think it's great that after all that time, people have continued to develop ways to make it fun and artistic and involve that in something that's so important for us. Yeah. Like, we have to do it, but we can make it fun and pretty at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, More than nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, and being Women's History Month, um, the research that I did, you know, teacher hat, okay, um, the research I did was. Uh, that was the first time in at least in the Western Europe and then it, it came over here to the United States that um, women kind of began saying hey we're working out of the home and we want to get paid for it and we want to be involved in the guilds or you know the like and the guys were saying uh -uh, no we're not going to do that as a matter of fact um, the angel of the house who was the the middle class woman of the household, she she did embroidery. She might have done a little bit of, of uh, spinning and, and, and work with with textiles, but she was beneath that. She, I mean, th that was beneath her. She should never be out of the house working. And uh, thanks to people like Mae Morris, who was the daughter of a very wealthy man who also believed that industrialization, industrialization was um, kind of uh, hurting not only craftspeople, but the value and the, um, the quality of the furniture that was being made in England at that time. So women were kind of the execu executants of uh, 
the designer, the men got all the credit, but through May, uh, May Morris, she started a guild for women artists. Mm -hmm. And then that idea brought itself over here. Mm -hmm. Uh, they use pottery guilds to help women get out of poverty, poverty, pottery to get out of poverty um, in places like Boston. And um, I think that's kind of cool that you've got, you know, we've got four artists in the two galleries this mm -hmm. this month, and we've got uh, Women's History Month, and yay for us! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we've only really had power over our own, you know. Would you call it? Yeah, our time and to be able to own property and all that since 1920. And now it just got like seriously. Yes, yes, But uh, so, yeah, there we go. So I, I like that connection. And I asked Abby if she did that on purpose, and she said, no. So that's kind of where, where we're coming from. And, um, yes, ma'am. So yeah, did you make all the wood pieces that go with her her works as well, like the hangers and the rings oh. that I'm seeing everywhere? No, I think the only piece I actually made was probably that one. Those two. Oh, both those of two. those on the far wall behind the desk. Um, both of those are pieces from her that I collected at her studio oh, while cool. we were doing a little tour. Um, but she definitely helped me put together a lot of these walnut pieces that don't have the capability to and drill a straight hole through that much <laughs> yeah. So she helped me mark everything out and get out the power tools and yeah. made a lot of that a lot simpler and smoother than it otherwise may have been if I was left to my own devices. Um, so it was very helpful. Yeah. And I were the circles like a read? Did you go, oh, let's do circles? And then, or did you guys kind of no, get I was, there? Very happy to see so many stripes and circles in her work when we first started peeking around at each other's stuff. Because I was like, oh my gosh, that's so similar to the designs that I'm starting with. And um, it really gave me a lot of confidence that it would be conducive once we got them all together. Because I think we're both coming from a very similar kind of geometric place. Yeah. And Abby, did you know? Well, I had seen pieces of both of your work, okay. and I don't know. I just felt like, I mean, I didn't know it was going to come together so cohesively, but I just had an idea. It just would play well with each other. And it does. It's, they they complement each other. They stand alone, and they work well together. So I could, I'm really happy with this exhibit. I'm really proud of both of you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, since you spoke about arts and crafts movement, um, do you feel like a connection to quilting mm. oh, and quilting yeah. patterns? I mean, uh, like when you, the things that... I definitely watch a lot of people do quilting. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not super proficient with the sewing mm -hmm. machine. I'd love to try it. But I think a lot of, some of the, maybe like those ones in the corner and stuff do kind of remind me more of like a classic blanket mm -hmm. sort of design, something a little more um, in that area. I'd love to branch out and add some quilting. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see about that. I can't sew. <laughs> so these these weavings are, are incredibly skilled in terms of, of like an understanding of how so, a loom works, you know, like for a beginner, I'm just yeah. kind of blown away with um, how you can achieve that level of specificity inside of a new, you know, like kind of a new discipline. So how did you do that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think my art's always been very um, math-based when it comes down to the design process. I like the tediousness of counting out every single row and remembering like, okay, we're going to have five twos and then we're going to have five threes and then we're going to have, you know, um, it kind of takes me out of the large scale while I'm working on it and lets me focus in on just tiny little chunks at a time and keeping them all very precise and I think that's part of what I really like about it is that sort of meditative tediousness that I can mm -hmm. really focus in on just that little corner, that little curve, and not picture the whole thing all at once. Um, Did you think draw out going slowly? I do usually sketch them first. Okay. I do usually do a little sketching and 
Uh, they kind of look like a paint by numbers. I just bought a couple of them, but they're really dirty from being rubbed all over the floor while I'm working and stuff. Um, but I sketch them out, kind of color them in, and then color code each little section. And that way I know how many yarns I need. And I can put my color palette together afterwards. And, um, so it really is kind of like a little paint by numbers. I go through and go, we finished section one, now we're moving on to color two, and mm -hmm. it's gonna go up here next to color three. And it simplifies the whole thing, so I don't have to think about how intense it's gonna be in completion. <laughs> I, I just wanna say how thankful I am for you, Joe. I have looked at your work in Abby's gallery for a while, a while. I see your pieces and it's so exciting for me to see you partner with um, a young talented artist like Jess and who is going to both of you bring so much beauty to this community and these two things coupled with my thankfulness to um, Abby for what she does. I just think this is the most beautiful compliments of three women and three talents. And we're just grateful for all of you very, very much. Well, so very kind. great job Thank to you. all of you. Thank you. I was going to ask if you ever sketch, Joe. Like I, I do a bit. Um, actually, I. I go to group therapy twice a week, <laughs> like twice a month. Sorry. I do a lot of sketching in there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, my little book that's supposed to be for feelings. I oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm just really writing down all kinds of important things. <laughs> I'm sketchy. I think a lot of artists do allow their feelings. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we'll say that. Yeah, not, not, not a lot. Um, sometimes you have to like think ahead, like that giant um, pot there is two pieces because I don't have the strength nor the, the length of tool that could actually hollow out something that big. I I actually get scared when I'm that deep in a bowl. So it's it's a two piece kind of activity, and you do have to think that through. Um, you, me, I have to think that through. It. But um, you know, most of it's just kind of the way my mind is, monkey minds. You know, you you can see the, you know. I'm definitely I'm a I'm a carpenter's daughter, but if my dad saw that, he goes, "Whoa, why is that not straight?" You know, like, you know. Or if there's a crack in something, I love to find like that uh, the piece back there with the uh, open mind, the woman's figure. Um, there was just this giant occlusion in there, and I thought, "Ooh, that's cool." And I drilled that out, and then another one, and. As I started looking at it, oh, it looks like a face. So um, I'm I'm still learning about carving and definitely still learning about the human form. But um, that that was fun because the the wood talked to me on that one. Sometimes I I uh, yeah, it'll just say this is this is cut me here. <laughs> I love reusing wood. Um, wood and a friend of ours called when she saw a massive one being cut down. In uh, near her son's school, mm -hmm. and I showed up. Didn't even have a pickup truck at that point. I showed up with a, you know, <laughs> like a little SUV, and the men were so excited to give it to me because they were going to chip it up and use it just as ground cover. Oh, so uh, I like working with the olive wood. Uh, that piece over there is olive, and the figure in it is just gorgeous. The lady's face over there. Um, I love working with redwood. Um, I am allergic to maple wood and walnut wood, <laughs> and in the summertime, I am a rash if I'm working with it. Just a big rash, but uh, walnut has one of the most beautiful scents. Uh, it's like almost like a, it's like a flower. It's, it's gorgeous, um, but I am allergic to it, so um, I have to, you know, when I finish, jump in the shower, cool water, you know. <laughs> It's kind of nasty looking, but so it comes with it. And let's see, did I answer the other two questions? Um, hard work. Oh, hardest. the hardest wood. Um, 
Sometimes, sometimes the olive, depending on how, well, burls. Burls are very hard usually because the grain doesn't go in one direction or another. It goes everywhere, but it's also the most beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, those are kind of coveted pieces of, of wood. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't find those very often. I, you know, you'll pay hundreds of dollars for a burl. Mm -hmm. um, but boy, they're some. It's beautiful. And uh, elm, uh, ash is a great one. And I don't think I have. Oh, the top piece on, on the big guy in the back. That's ash. Look at that green. Isn't that amazing? And that's from a dear friend who has since passed away. She mm -hmm. called when the tree had to come down. It was over 100 years old, but it had compromised her front porch. And uh, I broke both springs in my truck, hauling it to, <laughs> hauling the wood to uh, uh, Puebla to have it milled, um, just into you know billets about yay big, so it would dry faster. Mm -hmm. it takes a an inch takes a year per inch for wood to dry. Mm. Mm. And you can turn it green, but it's going to warp. And that's fine, you know, but you've got to be willing to go with that. Here it dries too fast and cracks, though. Mm. So you got to throw it into, uh, like, a wa some water, and it can get kind of, well, it gets a beautiful, uh, this is not, this didn't, this ha this is called spalting when it turns color like that. And that's just a piece of uh, pine from our yard that fell down in that big storm. Um, and that's cool when it happens, but when you uh, turn green wood, it can also happen. And you just have to be careful when you're turning it that you're not breathing in those spores. Um, you cut them away, but while you're cutting away, you don't want to breathe in it. So I have a whole, I have the whole thing that you've seen the nurses wear on during the pandemic with the little air vent and all that for when I'm turning. Mm. Mm. Any other questions? Well, thank you two so much. We really appreciate you. Thank you.